Hello everyone, today I am going to deal with the white tiger by Arvind Adiga. Here I will give you a very brief chapter by summary of the text, The White Tiger. We know that Arvind Adiga is an Indian author known for his works of fiction and The White Tiger is his debut novel which won the Man Booker Prize and for which he got international acclaim. His writings often provides a critical examination of Indian society shedding light on the disparities and challenges faced by different sections of the population. His works have resonated with readers worldwide and have contributed to a deeper understanding of contemporary India. Coming to the novel, the first chapter is The First Night. Say, the entire novel is written in the form of letters. Seven letters written by a man named Belram Halwai to the Chinese premier Wen Jiabao. Belram Halwai writes a letter to His Excellency Wen Jiabao, the premier of China, because the premier, the Chinese premier is soon to visit India. Belram, hearing the news, he has decided to share his own story, how he became a successful entrepreneur in India. That's what he is going to tell the Chinese premier. He claims himself to be a self-taught entrepreneur. He didn't have any formal education. It's true that he went to school, but he couldn't finish his education. And he is also talking about his formal employer, Mr. Ashok, and his wife, Pinky Madam. He says that, somebody, he says that he, including other impoverished peasants and people of India are half-baked. They are half-baked. They are not properly educated. They are not pro properly trained. But, but, but they, then they became successful entrepreneurs in a country called India. That's what he is going to talk about. When Jiabao. And meanwhile writing this letter, he talks about a police notice in which it's it's written wanted a man named Bella Malvai alias Muna five feet four inches between 25 35 years of age the son of a rickshaw puller and having a blackish complexion and a thin small build that is what written in the on the notice so it's clear that the police is looking for a man called Belram Halwai, who is the protagonist of the novel, often called as the anti-hero of the novel. At that time, we do, we do not know what the reason is, what is the kind that he has committed. We have no clue about anything. He talks about his experiences that he had during his school days. Actually, Belram, the name was not given to him by his parents. His parents actually didn't give him a name. They just called him Muna, which means boy. At school, his teacher, Mr. Krishna, called him Belram. He belongs to a village called Lakshmangar, which, according to him, belongs to the darkness. He attributes some places, some memories, some people to dark to darkness and some other others to light so according to him lakshmangar is a dark place which is an impoverished part of india that stands in stark contrast to the light the developed new delhi places places such as bangalore and new delhi and such bright memories in his life he remembers so many things, so many past events. He remembers a funeral scene of his mother. And at that time he was a very young boy. And he still remembered how his mother's body was dammed into the river. So that memory still haunts him. So as a child he has witnessed so many things in his life. And in their village, Lakshmangar, there were four landlords. And this is surprising that these four landlords were given or called by the names of four animals. The first one was the buffalo, and the second one the stork, 
Thakur Ramdev, that is his actual name, and the third person is the wild boar, and the fourth one the raven. Here, the second person, the stork, is actually Balram's master, Ashok's father. Yes, in these letters, the major in the major part of the novel is about Ashok and his wife Pinky Madam, and his affairs with his masters. Now we can see something about his family, Belram's family. Belram's father's name is Vikram, who was a rickshaw puller. It's clear that they belong to a very poor family, very poor background that he was hailing from. And his brother's name is Kishan. His grandmother was a very bold lady and her, her name is Kuzum. And he narrates the one incident which he had when he was in school. He was a boy who was very much afraid of lizards. And he says that was one reason why he stopped his formal education because towards lizards, people, especially his friends, mocked at him, bullied him. He had to face a lot of things. He was a dropout. And after that, he worked in a tea shop. From there, he listened to many people. He was dropped. He overheard the conversations of people who came there at the tea, tea shop. Meanwhile, he met a man named Vijay, who was someone who worked for the best company, and he was very much obsessed with Vijay. His working style, everything attracted him. Looking at Vijay, he thinks that he to want to become a driver. And there is another school incident which he talks about and why the title and why he was being called as the white tiger or he himself calls him the white tiger. We can see. We can see that in schools there will be inspections. The higher officials, especially in government schools, the higher officials will be com coming. The inspectors will come. There will, there will be um, interacting with the students as well. And one such incident, there was there came an inspector who was astonished to see Belram and called him White Tiger because Belram was someone who answered all the questions asked by the inspector. And he was very happy with Belram. But unfortunately, even if he was a very smart student, he had to stop his schooling. Maybe he was afraid of, maybe that may be one reason that he was afraid of lizards. He was bullied, mocked. And after that, as I said, he had to work in a tea shop. At the tea shop, he eavesdropped on conversations. He, he overheard, he eavesdropped on conversations of people who came there to have a sip of tea. And that is how he learned so many things in his life. He learned new things from there. He also talks about the financial situation of the family. It was not so sound. They had to take a loan in order to send one of the girls in his family because they have to pay dowry. They have to give dowry. For that, they are taking loan from the store, the landlord. So that was considered as uh, the, the girls, the women, the girl child of the family were considered as a burden during those times because once they have to marry them off to giving a huge amount of huge amount as a dowry. And Balram, as he listened to so many conversations, as he learnt so many things in his life, he believes that he is different from the other peasants, the other people of India. Now the second chapter, the second night. Here in this chapter, he describes his former employers, Ashok and Pinky Madam. So Ashok is the son of a stork, one of the landlords. After Balram's father's death, he moved to the city of Denbad, the coal mining city of Denbad. 
his father he narrates the tragic death of his father he was affected by tuberculosis they have taken him to the government hospital across the river because there was no hospitals in lakshmanagar belram and kishan had to take vikram to the government hospital across the river they were waiting for the doctor but the doctor was not available he went somewhere else maybe doing private practice that's how they had to suffer there and then and there his father dies so he still have the tragic memories of his father and mother in his mind as a child and keeping all this apart he went to the city of denpath he had that wish to learn driving he wanted to be a driver he wanted someone to teach him driving Dobaram finds a taxi driver interested in teaching him the man is skeptical because Belram comes from a caste expected to be sweet makers i or say what is that he belongs to a caste called halwais halwais are basically sweet makers so the driver was skeptical how come a halwai be a driver how can a sweet maker be a driver that was a question in his mind later he learns driving and after that another big question how to find a job belram comes from a very poor background he went from door to door trying to find a rich household who would employ him as a driver and thus he entered up at a shock's house the stock the stocks family at stocks house his son mugesh and stock hired belram as a driver for ashok ashok recently returned from america ashok and his wife returned from america now they were looking for a brilliant driver and they got belram now but there was another driver the first driver was ram parsad who was given the honda city car and balram was only driving the maruti suzuki balram uh, says also, along with his personal narrative he is shedding light on the political scenario the current social setup of the villages in india he says that the british rule brought chaos to the world to chaos to the nation it created two categories of people here men with big bellies and men with small bellies that is the rich and the poor people so he talks about the poor and rich distinction apart from being a driver at the ashok's house all the stocks house all he had to do a lot of other works all works as all the girls like massaging their feet cooking buying liquor for them he had to do almost everything but unlike mr mukesh and stork mr ashok was a very kind person mr ashok decided that he wanted to visit lakshmanagar which was also his birthplace and they have chosen balram as their driver Belram too was very excited because he is making a grand return to his hometown. Thus, he drove a shag and pingy madam in the Honda city to his village, Lakshman girl. Both were much excited. Kishan and Kuzum used to write to Mr. Belram about the news from the village. He also used to talk about the news from other news, other political news from the village. there was the great socialist the corrupt politician who controls the darkness the lakshman gar the village with empty promises of equality he has maintained power in the village during election times he would influence the people he would get he would grab their votes even though he was not doing anything good to them kusum in all her letters one thing which she was to say is that 
she wanted balram to marry someone but he refuses and gets angry whenever she comes up with such a talk and even in this meeting she talks about his marriage but he gets angry and refuses it meanwhile in the car pinky madam says that he is so fed up with the condition here in india she wanted to somehow return to us but ashok was very different from pinky madam because he wanted to stay here in india in his homeland hometown the next part is the fourth morning here he writes about indian democracy and the condition of india it's very surprising that he doesn't even know his birthday but during election times he was attributed he was uh, say he was being said that he was 18 because that was the right age for voting even though he didn't know his birthday he was being marked as 18 during the times of election it was impossible to ward out of power the great socialist but they made plans who oh, ashok and his family made some plans the great socialist was accused of many crimes they were accused of rapes they were accused of corruption and so many other things but police were not dared enough to charge any any crimes against them any cases against them so they made an agreement between the four lands there was an there was an arrangement between the four landlords and the great socialist had apparently fallen there were some adjustments and the landlords say that they are going to form a new party that was actually a part of a strategy they said that they going to form a new party they did something they named it all india po- social progressive front leninist fraction the new party was merely it was actually a strategy a tactic in an order to force a great socialist to bargain and the stork the stork's family became successful in that the other landlords became successful in that stork was named as a president of lakshman gar branch of great socialist party actually they didn't want to form a new party and continue in that way but they wanted to get some position in this party the great socialist party they wanted to get a great position in in that ruling party that is why they played this strategy the great socialist once had a meeting at the stocks mansion with the stock his sons and vijay vijay we know the the one who worked for the bus company who was also a politician he describes a great socialist as having puffy cheeks spiky white hair and thick old earrings balram used to eavesdrop all the conversations all the discussions one day balram eavesdropped on a discussion between the stock and his sons to learn that the stock pays tri- bribes so that he can take call from government mines for free balram was caught and reprimanded by the nepal servant ram bahadur there was another servant called ram bahadur he caught him he watched balram he was dropping these conversation he is dropping on this discussions he informs that ashok and pinky madam are leaving for delhi Balram observes the Ram Parishad, the first driver, the one who drove the Honda City car, Ram Parishad. Ram Parishad, he noticed that Ram Parishad didn't eat with the other servants. So he was very different from the other people. He secretly learns that he was a Muslim and he was fasting. Because if he said that he was a Muslim, he, wa- he won't be appointed as a driver in the Sog family. casteism was very high during those times and that is why he told a lie that his name is ram parishad actually he was a muslim my he might have got some other name and bell ram 
reveals everything to Ram Bahadur, the Nepali servant. And that is how Balram gets a upper hand over these people. Ram Parishad left the stock service and Balram is appointed to accompany Mr. Rashagan, Pinky Madam, to Delhi. Balram tells the Premier that he will have to turn the chandelier up because the story gets much darker from here. So there, always, there is always this image of the chandelier in this novel. Chandeliers, the lights, it lights up something. So he says that it's time to turn the chandelier because the story gets, gets much darker from here. Next chapter is titled as a fourth night. Here Balram expresses his enthusiasm for the chandeliers, the lights which is going to light up his, his life. He describes Delhi. The real Delhi is a crazy city. Rich people live in large housing colonies there. And he says that it is, it is impossible to navigate because the numbering system for a no-orderly system. The house numbers, the roads, names and numbers. Nobody knows how, how to reach a particular house or flat. It was quite impossible because it doesn't follow any order or system. Nobody knows the names of roads there. But Ashok loves to live in Delhi. He thinks his wife will love Gurgaon. Delhi's most American session fell over shopping malls and American corporations. Like Pinky Madam date, the Mangus. The Mangus means Mugesh Sir, who is Ashok's brother. Mugesh, Mr. Mush Mugesh. The mongoose insulted Balram for his driving skills, but Mr. Ashok defended him always. Pinky Madam and the mongoose were not happy with Balram. They suspected him. They somewhere felt that Balram is going to be dishonest towards Ashok. While Ashok and Pinky Madam were shopping on the mall, one driver called him Country Mouse. So the insults, the bullying, the mockery that he faced was immense. So while they were shopping in the shopping mall, Balram was called by his fellow driver as a country mouse. He refers to this man as vitiligo lips. Since his lips suffered from a disease called vitiligo, which was very common, very rampant among India's poor people. It causes one skin color to change from brown pink, brown to pink, and to give it logo lips a grotesque clown-like appearance. The other driver gave Belram advices about surviving in in Delhi. So there were people who ad gave him some good advices, and there were people who talked to him about corruption, about drugs about the ways in which they can survive in a city called Delhi. They were also talking about corruption among the police, hard partying lifestyles of people, and also they talked about the difficult lives of servants. The servants during those times, they allowed to read magazines, especially Murder Weekly. When Vitiligo Lip wanted Balram to procure illicit good, he remained loyal and said Ashok is a moral man. So Vitiligo Lip, Lips was someone who said Balram, we can live in many ways here in Delhi. We can, you can uh, give drugs, you can sell, we can sell drugs to our masters and that's how we can earn something. We can have some extra income. But here Balram says... Ashok is a moral man. He, he is now going to do such things. So I am not interested in that. That's what his reply was. In New Delhi, they got a new apartment, Buckingham Towers B block on the 13th floor. But Belram and all other servants, they lived in the separate servants' quarters in the basement along with all other servants. But... There, the other servants bullied him. One day, he drove the mongoose and Ashok to the Congress Party headquarters. When they caught in a traffic jam, Ashok complained of poor road planning. But 
when they were talking about the poor road planning the construction the development and all balram noticed to the masses of malnourished grimy people from the darkness so he wonders about the coexistence of two different delhis the new delhi and the old delhi ashok informs that mangoos is leaving by train next morning mangoos means mr mugesh sir who is ashok's brother mangoos left pingi started wearing revealing clothes and all balram gets actually attracted towards pingi madam she teases him for his manners she was always criticizing him she was always teasing him for his manners she and ashok were fighting over an argument as well as an able to pronounce the word mall she might, he might have said mall or something like that he was not able to pronounce the word mall correctly and they both were arguing on that one day when masters pinky madam and belram were shopping a poor man tried to enter the mall and the security guards refused him entry he asked am i not a human being too the old man the poor man in ragged clothes was restricted entry to the shopping mall due to listening to the insults of pinky madam belram decided to buy some new clothes for himself he wanted to dress up himself as a shark belram was instructed to serve pizza on pinky madam's birthday he was mocked as he was unable to pronounce the word correctly pizza actually it's not pizza it's a, it is pizza that's how it's being pronounced masters came out of the mall and were drunk after the party after the birthday party masters came out of the mall and they were drunk she insisted that she wanted to drive pinky madam insisted that that day she wanted to drive until she ran over a child in the road presumably killing him or her belram quickly retook the driver's seat and took them home so he had to save his masters there back at home he removed all traces of blood and flesh from its surface after this incident mongoose arrived in delhi mongoose and eloy was waiting for mr belram the lawyer then gave belram a paper to sign it was a confession they wanted belram to take full responsibility for the heat and rain they did in the next chapter is the fifth night belram he uses the metaphor of the rooster cob as the most powerful image or the metaphor used by arvind dadiga in the novel Belram's metaphor it is the Bela, it is Belram's metaphor for describing the oppression of India's poor rooster cop traps hundreds of hens and roosters tightly together in foul smelling wire mesh cages they witnesses they know that they will kill them also but butcher slaughters other kitchens they are witnessing everything they see everything others don't but others don't even try to escape because they didn't have another option likewise the servants in india are conditioned the poor servants are conditioned they know they know about their situation they realize everything but they don't make any attempt to escape even though servants have frequent opportunities to cheat their masters or escape their situations they remain subservient rather than taking these opportunities so he says that rooster coop is a servant mindset only someone willing to see his family tortured and murdered would be able to break out of the rooster coop otherwise nobody is going to do that Belram says that it would take a freak a pervert a white tiger such as himself to take such a risk no other people no other drivers are going to do that he is the white tiger he is very bold he is very determined and he is having that courage to break out of this shell 
break out of this vihamish this rooster coop because he says he has already said that he is different from other peasants he is an unlike other indians now he gets back to the story he signed the paper which was brought by the mongoose and the lawyer he worries about jail stork and mongoose left delhi after this incident another incident happens at night and pinky madam asked him to drive her to the airport he was quite embarrassed what made pinky madam to take him to the airport she was actually leaving for america breaking her marriage with a shock during her departure she gives him she gives beldram an envelope containing 4700 rupees but ashok didn't know anything he had no clue about it all next day when he came to know about everything he gets very angry with belram he gets drunk he is broken he is very much depressed belram meanwhile receives a letter from his granny kuzum she was saying she was asking him to send more money and to get married he was not interested in all those affairs but he was in a lot to read it alone mangos didn't respect his privacy mangos insisted that he should open and read it aloud belram mentions that about the cage of the white tiger in delhi's national zoo a sign reads imagine yourself in this cage so he assumes himself to be inside that cage while belram was meditating in the car in the lotus position other drivers mocked at him he faces so many bullying from uh, delhi such mockeries are part of rooster coop mechanism he believes that punishing any behavior considered innovative or out of the ordinary was quite common during those times among the drivers not even among the drivers but any other servants Beldram. He abruptly ends this letter saying that there is an emergency. The next chapter is the sixth morning. Here Beldram talks about his transformation from a new village boy into a debauched, depraved city resident. How he became an entrepreneur, how he became a city resident. One day at the mall, Ashok went to a discord, a club, a party where people would gather, would come together at night and would dance. they would be partying ashok went there after getting separated from pinky madam belram asked vitty lego lids what his future will be as a driver he said you may save enough money to buy a small house in the slum and send your child to university apart from that nothing is going to happen in your life you will save some money you may buy a small house in the slum and you may send your child to university apart from that nothing is going to happen in your life but by then you would be too old so that's how a driver's life is going to be after a while mr ashok left the hotel with a nepali woman called miss uma Asked Belram to take them to PBR Sacred Cinema Complex. Belram went into the second PBR, a smaller, grimmier version of the market meant for servants. There he meets a bookseller. He expressed his frustration with, in- with India's socio-economic conditions. Back at the apartment, Belram is dropped over the phone calls, over the phone conversations between Ashok and Uma. He learns that Uma was actually his lover, lover even before he left for New York. Ashok received a phone call from his family in Dhanbad instructing him to bribe another minister. He is Pia Belran, he drops everything. Belran drove Mr. Ashok to the minister's house in order to give him bribes so that they will get mines. stopped at several ATM counters for making withdrawals for the bribe. So 
Balram was the one who witnessed everything. Balram entirely understood the nature of Ashok's duties in Delhi, what he was doing, why he shifted from Thinbad here to Delhi. He knew everything. Balram ears dropped on the conversation which was about the call business. It was all about the call business. Minister's assistant directed Balram to a brother. They picked up a tall, beautiful, blonde prostitute from Ukraine. But Ashok was not interested towards that blonde, beautiful girl. The next chapter is the sixth night. The rich people of Delhi used to walk around the apartment complexes. That was their only physical exercise. One day Balram lied and told with illegal lips that his master wanted to hire a prostitute with golden hair. Actually, he wanted to, Balram himself wanted to have a woman. He learns various ways in which the drivers cheat their employers by siphoning petrol, taking the car to corrupt mechanics who inflate the price and receiving a cut of the money, reselling empty liquor bottles to boat leggers and using the car as a freelance taxi. That's how the drivers make extra income without giving any clue to the masters. Earned much money with which he can buy thousands of prostitutes. He believed that he can buy thousands of prostitutes with that money. He gives Viti Lego lips an envelope of cash and told him that he is looking for prostitutes for himself and for, not for a shock. And they both went to a hotel, meets Anastasia, a blonde prostitute. He thinks he was in, she was in, no, not he. He thinks she was in much beautiful when compared to the other girl that Ashok has taken or, or Ashok met. Including a working class surcharge, he had to pay 7,000 rupees for 20 minutes. He gets angry when he discovers that she was not naturally blonde, but it was her hair was dyed. Ashok was waiting for him and Vitilio Gibbs has lied to Mr. Ashok and told him that Beltram has been offering prayers for his master's health at the temple. Mangus insisted that Ashok remarry, but Ashok didn't agree to that. He gave Ashok a red back. Next day, Beltram brought the red back to the car. When alone, he opened it. When Mangos and Ashok were not there, he opened the car. He thought that he personally had rights to the money since it was a bribe meant to avoid taxes which were meant to be paid for the welfare of the poor. While driving, he saw signs which he interpreted as assurances that he should steal the bag. So he is making plans. After bringing Ashok to a hotel, Beltram drove to the train station planning out a possible escape route. One day, Beltram told Ashok he was going to the temple but instead travelled by bus and jeep taxi to Delhi, Delhi's red light district. He realizes that Nepali girls are caged animals like him. He went to the huge Darya Ganj second-hand book market in all Delhi. There, a Muslim shop owner reads him a line of poetry. You were looking for the key for years, but the door was always open. And these two lines are all, always reverberating in the mind of Mr. Balram. Next day, he went to the butcher's quarter. He imagined the skulls as those of his family. The next day, Balram wandered to the horrific slums. There were families living in tents surrounded by sewage and broken glass, so he witnessed the real India. Balram tossed Ashok's 100 rupee note back to a river of sewage where children were playing, and those children, they scrambled, they, they were fighting for that coin. Fourth son of Balram's aunt Dharam came and gave Balram a letter from Kuzum. Reading that letter and looking at Dharam, he slapped him. Next day, he introduced him to Ashok as his helper. He even talked Uma and Ashok about their marriage. They were talking about their marriage. Like Minky, Madam said, Uma also wanted to replace Balram. 
they smell something fishy in their relationship and there goes the radio news which says the great socialist party came to power with the support from the darkness one day balram one day balram asked for a leaf so that he can take them to the zoo he found a shog meeting another guy to replace balram he was very disturbed and at the zoo he confronts the white tiger and balram writes a letter to kuzum I can't live the rest of my life in a cage granny I am so sorry and then he drove a shock to several banks filling the red bag from ATM some total of about it was about all some total was about 7 lakh rupees then he the sum total was 7 lakh rupees now that baram know that in that red bag he carries a lot of money about 7 lakh rupees he wanted to somehow get that back while he was driving balram stopped the car said there is some problem with the wheel he asked a shark to join him to help him he was needing before the wheel to inspect balram repeatedly rammed the broken liquor bottle to a shark's skull really he really wanted to kill otherwise his family will ruin his life he killed the mr ashok by stabbing him in the neck then belram dragged the body into the bushes wiped himself clean and changed his clothes he drove next he drove to the railway station he escaped then he thought of dharam and goes to take him and they both escape now we can move on to the last chapter which is the seventh night here we can see the current life of mr balram he tells the premier that this would be his final letter balram traveled to bangalore by an indirect route at a tea shop he saw a police poster with his image even in bangalore but he was so sure that nobody is going to recognize him nobody can identify him because he is so different the photo could be of the half the men in india the impoverished people the peasants the poor villagers he was never identified through it it took several weeks for his nose to come he is in bangalore after a murder and it took several weeks for him to get back to normal bangalore is full of outsiders which made it easier for belram to blend in belram listened to the voices of the city he was dropping on street conversations so he came to know that outsourcing was the best option for call center workers he tried to start taxi services there were so many call center worker, wo- workers so if he start taxi service there will be people that was his expectation but the companies already hired taxi drivers so he bribed the police to to stop other drivers and he started his company the white tiger tri- drivers and it became very successful it has 16 drivers and 26 vehicles now that he is able to earn 15 times a greater amount of what he has stolen from mr ashok there in bangalore he even adopted a new name ashok sharma quite surprising right he adopted the name he called himself as ashok ashok sharma he discussed the future of india he foresees an indian revolution he says the revolution is never going to happen unless we are going to change we are going to make that the age of the white man is drawing to a close and that the yellow man and brown men will rule the world within 20 years time he was so sure that yellow men and brown men will rule the world within 20 years time one of his drivers named mohammed asif had accidentally hit a boy riding on his bicycle and that was one reason why he abruptly ended one letter he says there is one emergency and i have to end this letter that's how he goes in one of the nights in one of the letters 
so this was the reason that one of his drivers mohammad asif had accidentally hit a boy riding on his bicycle belra asked to call the police police officer and the dead boy's mother were familiar to him they were screaming at mohammad assistant commissioner actually helped belra now that belra is a very rich person he had a lot of money and thus the assistant commissioner helped belra then belra visits his family the boy's family he visits the boy's family gives 25000 rupees and assures a job for the remaining son he thinks of his own family then what might have happened to his family after the murder he didn't go back to his family his village even to delhi he didn't know what might have happened to those people will anyone would have survived the dog's vengeance tells the premier that the only difference between him and anyone else in the darkness is that he has woken up while the rest are still sleeping they are still continuing their lifestyle in the same manner they're not earning anything they're not doing anything they end up their lives as just as drivers and about that he say something about dharam dharam is doing well he is currently receiving good education at an english medium school in bangalore He concludes the letter by talking about the future of Bangalore. Everyone with power has killed someone on their way to the top. That's what he believes. He plans to sell at the end we can see him planning to sell his startup and move to some real estate business. He decides to open a new school for poor children in Bangalore charity Next Generation of White Tigers. He believes that finally he has come out to the rooster cob so this is the most powerful image of the novel the image of the rooster cob other people other drivers other presence other poor people are not able to come out of the rooster cob but he was able to do that because he was so resilient he was so determined he was so courageous and bold so that's all about that's a brief summary of the novel the white tiger i think i know that this is not enough so try to read the exact text so in the next video i'll be giving an analysis of the novel so thank you for watching thank you